Epistle 54 on asthma and death. My ill health has allowed me a long furlough, when suddenly it resumed the attack. What kind of ill health, you ask? And you surely have a right to ask, for it is true that no kind is unknown to me. But I have been consigned, so to speak, to one special ailment. I do not know why I should call it by its Greek name, for it is well enough described as shortness of breath. Its attack is of very brief duration. Like that of a squall at sea, it usually ends within an hour. Who indeed could breathe his last for long? I have passed through all the ills and dangers of the flesh, but nothing seems to me more troublesome than this. And naturally so, for anything else may be called illness, but this is a sort of continued last gasp. Hence the physicians call it practicing how to die. For some day the breath will succeed in doing what it is so often essayed. Do you think that I am writing this letter in a merry spirit just because I have escaped? It would be absurd to take delight in such supposed restoration of health as it would be for a defendant to imagine that he had won his case when he had succeeded in postponing his trial. Yet in the midst of my difficult breathing I never ceased to rest secure in cheerful and brave thoughts. What, I say to myself, does death so often test me? Let it do so. I myself for a long time tested death. When, you ask, before I was born. Death is non-existent and I know already what that means. What was before me will happen again after me. If there is any suffering in this state, there must have been such suffering also in the past, before we entered the light of day. As a matter of fact, however, we felt no discomfort then. And I ask you, would you not say that one was the greatest of fools who believed that a lamp was worse off when it was extinguished than before it was lighted? We mortals are also lighted and extinguished. The period of suffering comes in between, but on either side there is a deep peace. For, unless I am very much mistaken, my dear Lucilius, we go astray in thinking that death only follows, when in reality it has both preceded us and will in turn follow us. Whatever condition existed before our birth is death. For what does it matter whether you do not begin at all or whether you leave off, inasmuch as the result of both these states is non-existence? I have never ceased to encourage myself with cheering counsels of this kind, silently of course, since I had not the power to speak. Then little by little this shortness of breath, already reduced to a sort of panting, came on at greater intervals, and then slowed down and finally stopped. Even by this time, although the gasping had ceased, the breath does not come and go normally. I still feel a sort of hesitation and delay in breathing. Let it be as it pleases, provided there be no sigh from the soul. Except this assurance from me, I shall never be frightened when the last hour comes. I am already prepared and do not plan a whole day ahead. But do you praise and imitate the man whom it does not irk to die, though he takes pleasure in living? For what virtue is there in going away when you are thrust out? And yet there is virtue even in this. I am indeed thrust out, but it is as if I were going away willingly. For that reason the wise man can never be thrust out, because that would mean removal from a place which he was unwilling to leave. But the wise man does nothing unwillingly. He escapes necessity because he wills to do what necessity is about to force upon him. Farewell.